Hey there everyone, my name is Monkey Shrapnel from the Guys of the Games, and we're here with, uh, th this, this thing that I wanted to do, this thing, you know? I wanted to play Halo 2, oh, let me turn this down a little. So I wanted to play Halo 2, I wasn't sure how I was going to do it, because there's a couple of different ways you can play it, obviously there's the original Xbox version, there's the crappy ass Vista port, I mean, no offense to the guys who worked on that stuff, because... You know, like with everything with Halo, it seems like Halo's just cursed, you know. Every every single Halo project just has some horrible issue in the background. But uh, nonetheless, you know, you can play Project Cartographer, which is basic. I have that, but that's basically just Vista, but better. Because it's built off of it and then, you know, improves a bunch of stuff. But um, I decided I'm going to go with the current MCC version. For now, at least. I might actually... I'm not sure when, but I probably will eventually do a playthrough of the Project Cartographer version, just because it has a lot of differences, and also it'll be an excuse to play through Halo 2 again. Uh, because uh, there's a lot of differences between the different versions of the game. I mean, the biggest, obviously, is between Xbox and all the versions, but even just with other stuff, you'd be surprised how many smaller differences there are. Uh, although, and honestly, MCC as of late, has done a really, really good job of basically fixing all that crap to make it much more in line with the Xbox version, other than, you know, uh, it, it'll never play the same because ultimately the fact that the game runs twice as fast will always make it, will always influence how the game plays, which you might not realize it, but it actually does make the game a lot harder in a lot of ways. Just because, like, everything happens so much faster. Like, it doesn't literally happen to you faster, but, like, enemies in particular, like, basically everything they do is, like, they think twice as fast, they react twice as fast, you know, stuff like that. But, um, yeah. So, we're gonna go with classic everything. I'm not gonna have any scoring or head on or anything, because we're gonna try to keep it faithful. And I really thought about this. I'm probably going to regret this, but I think we're going to go with Legendary. We're going to do Legendary. Uh, I'm going to turn everything off. I guess I'll keep I Whip and Your Daddy on just for funsies. Because maybe we'll hear some good dialogue. Uh, other than that, there's not really anything else I'd want. I'll probably mess around with Skulls more once I do... Because uh... a lot of these Skulls are just like, eh, whatever. I'll probably mess around with Skulls more once I do like a more class, like once I do like a run of Project Cartographer and, you know, at some point, you know, I might even try to do a, uh, like an Xbox original version because I can record my Xbox and there's also like Xbox emulators that aren't necessarily in great condition, but you know, at some point in the future, we'll do that. We're going to start from Heretic. Uh, this is going to be a bit more of a casual run through. I thought about trying to do... Actually, in fact, maybe I should just skip this, because, like, I think I would prefer to do a more story-heavy, like, a one where I actually pay, care about the story, uh, on, like, a natural, like, different version. Like, for this one, I'm just gonna be playing through a Legendary, through that crap, you know what I mean? Like, I actually really love Halo 2's story, I really like the little soap opera, space opera thing it has going for it, but, uh, actually, yeah, in fact, I'm not even gonna watch this, screw all this crap. You know, I can meme on the dialogue all I want, because it's like, you know, Mark Six is, you know, your new shields are very, you know, very resilient, you know, all that jazz, but extremely resilient, very efficient, but I'm, even though, uh, as everyone knows, in this game, you die faster than, like, you know, a piece of soggy tissue on Legendary Frick. I think, like, off the top of my head, it's like, what, does the carbine kill kills you in like eight? And they fire it like a million shots a second? Yeah, we're just gonna skip everything. We're not gonna, we're, this is gonna be pure gameplay. Hell yeah. Wait. This is gonna be pure game, I'm trying to think, I, I'm not crazy, right? Whatever, this will be pure gameplay. I'm just trying to think, cause I do, uh, never mind. We'll, we'll find out later on, but th this looks fine. I don't know. Uh, this is just something in the back of my head. It's like, I hope I didn't fuck something up. Alright. So, Halo 2. You know, if you've ever played Halo 2, you know, you know that... 
Halo 2's difficulties are very, very skewed. Easy in Halo 2 is probably the easiest easy in any Halo game. Because you can basically just stand out in the open and never... You will basically never die unless you, like, literally want to die. And even then, like... It still won't really happen much. So I'm gonna try to play through... Kind of legit, like, I'm gonna do my best not to skip stuff. But, uh, maybe I will, because there are some parts that I j I'm not looking forward to, so, who knows. But, uh, yeah, Halo 2's difficulties are super skewed. Easy and normal. Even normal in this game is easier than Halo 1's normal. But then, normal, or, like, heroic is, like, all of a sudden the game is a lot harder than even Halo 1's heroic. And, like, Halo 2's heroic is almost equivalent to Halo 1's legendary. And then... Halo 2's Legendary is absolutely batshit crazy. Like, you can see here, like, I'm sitting way back shooting shit, and that's pretty much how you have to play the game, because it's, it's just, you're not gonna do it any other way, because, like, shit's just so hard. Because you die, they, it, like, they shoot so fast, and they sh kill you so quick. It, it's just absurd. Like, I just, but I, I just almost died there. I was probably like two or three shots from death there. But, uh, thankfully, I'll, I'll talk about this more later, but the, the Marines in this game, hoo wee, they, they, they carry their weight. Alright, now, uh, that guy was out of range, unfortunately, but, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> this is pretty much what I'm going to be doing for, like, a lot of the game. At least the early game. Because, basically, anything that either... Anything that isn't a power weapon or, like, some sort of, like... Like, if it isn't a power weapon or, like, a headshot weapon or, like, the plasma pistol, you're not... It's just not worth it. Because, like, it's just how fast everything goes. Like, it's just, like, you can't. You know what I mean? Like, things... It's too fast paced. You die too fast. God damn, Marines, calm down. It's it's just it's just kind of how Halo 2 is. Like I actually really love Halo 2, but I Halo 2 Legendary is not one of the things I love about it. So I just want to point this out. Watch what happens when I jump through this window. Oh hey, look, some dude spawned. Guess Bungie didn't think of that. Those dudes are supposed to spawn when you go over here. But uh, for some reason, they like. Halo 2 is actually normally pretty good about this, but there are some weird things like that. Or, like, you can tell that, like, they didn't really have time to test everything super in depth. So, like, those guys spawn if you enter this area at all, even if you enter through the window. This little, like, window. So you can just watch them spawn. Anyways, uh. I'm gonna shoot this guy. Oh, fuck. Because uh, I know there's an elite here, and uh, because it's legendary, there's more. It's more likely he's a red guy than, like, a, another guy. Ugh. I think there's only one elite that comes out of there. Halo 2 uh, actually has a lot of, like, spawns that are influenced by how many enemies are currently alive. So it's actually. The game is weirdly, like, encouraging of rushing. Because, like, if I rush through here, there would be a lot less enemies in the back area here. Like, obviously. You know, that means I would have to, you know, actually rush through them all, which, you know, is kind of a death sentence. But, uh, you can run up top here and kind of get around it all. Because, uh, you know, the game originally was made for the Xbox. And, uh, you know, one of the, like, people talk about Halo 2's rush development. And, like, that is true, but it, the reality is, is that the, the big thing that is of, a, like, an actual product of that rush development is the actual, like, like game engine itself or like i don't even know if that's the right word like the like the game just originally on the xbox just had a lot of it struggled you know there's a lot of pop in on the original game it isn't really an issue if you play on any of the ports but the original xbox version had a lot of pop in that was a big issue with it uh i guess we'll find them this seems fine I'm carrying an extra plasma pistol, because this next room is where things start to get spicy. We're going to walk this way, because if you jump through here, sometimes you gotta, you don't get a checkpoint. Because uh, this room is when things start to pick up. 
This is when the game's like, all right, you're about to get fucked. I'm gonna die. I'm dead. Yep. See. See what I mean? Look how fast I die. And like, like I jumped, and then I'm just still getting shot. Like this date. They're so accurate that you just get brutalized. Now there are some useful tricks. Like this area actually, the nice thing is that they give you a bunch of grains and they kind of teach you about this. That like, yeah, toss some nades over there. It kind of fucks them up when they're in a big group. Really, this is a big thing with Halo 2 is, uh, Things that kill instantly are kind of a big deal because you always want to be killing stuff before they can shoot you. Because you just you can't afford to get shot ever in this game. There's a white dude there. There's a lot of stuff I can talk about in gameplay, but I don't know how much I'm going to talk about that. I guess we'll see. Oop, oop. It's going to be an ultra here. Look at that sucker. Thankfully, uh, I got a noob combo right away. That's good. That guy's mega dead. I think that means all the Marines are dead already. Yep. Holy! <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Okay. I guess we can talk about these guys. So, uh, Halo 2 has a lot of the same ranks as Halo 1. I, I'm pretty sure I talked about those, but Halo 2 adds like, uh, like a new tier for Elites and Grunts. White, or like silvery white dudes. They're called Ultras, and they both come with the... Uh, some substantial things. So in the case of Ultra Grunts, they chuck needs a lot. Like, way more than regular Grunts do. And that, you'll definitely notice this, because, uh... Yeah, like, you can see, like, that's three grenades that Grunt tossed, and I barely even saw him. He's just chucking needs like crazy. We'll talk about Elite Ultras later on when that comes, I guess, relevant. Oh, there's another grenade. Oh, he stuck his buddy, though. Woo. Yeah, you can see, like, these guys are barely even shooting me. They're just chucking nades at me instead. Thankfully, for this level, ammo is not really a concern, for the most part. Malta, what is your status? Malta, what is your status? Over. If you don't stare at this thing blowing up, it takes forever. You can, you know, if you think about it, in a sense, you're essentially speeding up their demise by looking at them, them dying. That is, those are some ultras. Holy shit! Yeah. So, uh, elite ultras are obviously they're the just like what you'd expect. They're a little tougher to kill. Ultra elites in particular are pretty absurd because they have like twice as much shielding as uh, elite majors, the red dudes, and their shields recharge as fast as yours. You know, in roughly I think five seconds, four to five seconds. I forget what the exact time is because it's some very specific number. Alright, so they recharge absurdly fast. Like, that's literally, once again, that's twice as fast as the Red Majors. Who normally take about twice as long as yours to recharge. So, uh, not only do they, are they really, really tough, but they also, like, if you don't keep shooting at them, they'll, they'll get their health back quick. So, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, I don't know if I should say they don't know this, but uh, only shields in this game really recharge. Uh, enemies do have health. And their health can regenerate, but it's like, on a like a unit to unit basis, their health can only recharge so much. And it's usually pretty slow. And I'm pretty sure in particular for elites, their health doesn't recharge at all. Like no matter what, except on like, under like specific circumstance. So, uh, if you can take out their shields, you know, you can whittle them down. But it's just, you probably shouldn't be doing that. It's not the way to go, you know. You don't want to be giving them chances to get their shields back because uh, a big thing with elites and their shields is that if they have shields right they don't flinch at all right the, the games refer to this as pings uh, so like uh, then specifically making them like recoil from taking too much damage is generally called hard pings that's what that's like when you'll like see them like like you know get pushed back or something from a new from plasma pistol them right that's a hard ping Hard pings don't always trigger if they're doing something weird, like certain animations like prevent a hard ping, but if they're just like standing like that, right? If I hit him with the plasma, right, you can see like he gets pushed back. That's essentially what a hard ping is. And if they have shields, right, you can't make them hard ping at all unless you take out their shields. So 
It can be difficult to... Like, right? That's a big thing with elites, too. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna chuck a nade. So, uh, yeah. The thing with elite ultras, too, is even on lower difficulties, they don't die from, uh... Plasma grenades, but uh, on legendary, like sticking them with a plasma. Oh fuck! Sticking them with a plasma grenade doesn't even like. It takes out. It takes like two sticks to kill them, and it's like the first stick isn't even like close. Like it's not like it takes out their shields. Like they just tank that shit. Cause uh, in this game, uh, shields take half damage from explosions. This applies to you too, but it's way more notable with you know elites because they're way tougher than you, obviously. This is a great spot to be, by the way, because, like, not only is it, like, good cover, but uh, if you stand, like, a certain spot up here, they'll shoot at the barrier here, because they try to, they kind of aim for center mass on you. So, depending on where you're standing, right, they just kind of can't hit you very well, which is pretty useful. This is actually a great place to be, too, just because, like, the Marines are actually super helpful. Like, you can see, like, they, they basically make it so that they can't really take cover from you. Because either the marines shoot them or you get, like, they get shot. So it's like, it's actually a great spot to be. Of course, because this is Halo 2 Legendary, no matter how useful your marines are, uh, they die real quick. I guess I'll talk about that right now. So, the big reason why Halo 2 marines are, well, there's a lot of reasons, but, like, one of the biggest things is that, like that I was talking about with earlier with hard pings, in Halo 1, Marines have a hard ping threshold of, like, z I think it's literally zero. That's why in Halo 2, any time a Marine ever gets shot, they will meet, they will always flinch. This means that if they're getting shot at by, like, any group of, like, enemies, they just, they will literally be stunlocked to death, essentially. Like, literally, that's what happens. They will be unable to move at all. And... In Halo 2, their, their, you know, their threshold is at an actual number, so they actually have to get shot a little bit to actually flinch properly. And hey, look, it's our first Zealot, and he's dead. Yeah, Zealots in Halo 1 are, like, pretty badass. Uh, Halo 2, the problem with Zealots is that uh, because you die so fast from regular bullets, the instant kill threat of Zealots kind of doesn't matter. Because, like, who cares? I can get insta-killed by, like, anybody. Not to mention that even on Legendary, you can survive getting hit by a sword. If, depending on, like, where you're standing. Because, like, the sword has an actual... Like, in Halo 1, when they swing the sword, it's just, a, like, a giant death zone around them. But Halo 2 actually brought in, like, uh, what's referred to in the code, or I guess in the engine, as, like, uh, like an inner and outer cone angle. Which... In essentially just means like that's where like instead of like them mailing and it's just a giant circle hitbox around them the hitbox can essentially be active only in specific spots so like this gets used basically so that uh, when they melee with their plasma rifle for example right the hitbox the like melee attack only exists around like where their gun actually is so they actually have to actually like hit you Instead of it just being like, oh, I'm standing behind him, and I still got hit. And that applies to the sword, too. So, like, you if you're, like, standing on, like, the very edge of where their sword is, sometimes you'll just, like, live with, like... In fact, sometimes you'll just barely take any damage at all, because it's actually, like, pretty, like, lenient. There's even, like, tricks you can use to where they can basically just, like, completely, like, miss you. Yeah, enough of that, buddy. Like, there's just a lot... Like, the Halo 2 engine is a big improvement, for sure, over Halo 1. Even though it doesn't always use those improvements to the best of its ability. Because Halo 2 is definitely not uh, anywhere near as finely tuned as Halo 1 is, unfortunately. <laughs> Woo, baby! I was probably like one or two shots from death there. I think that's everything. Uh -oh. Yeah. There we go. Alright, stare at the window so they blow up. Pick up some frags. Get our new combo ready. So if you haven't noticed, uh, the plasma pistol overcharge in this game is 
absolutely bonkers. Like, it's the one saving grace, basically. For whatever reason, the noob combo... I, I keep calling it the noob combo. I guess that's... That's what most people call it. I guess that's just what I'm used to calling it, but... The overcharge in this game's tracking is absolutely stupid. It is, like, ten times stronger than in Halo 1. In Halo 1, it's like, as long as they don't move too much, you, like, you, you pretty much just want to, like... You almost don't want to even really rely on the tracking too much in Halo 1. But this game, it's like... It'll pretty much never miss unless they're doing something crazy. Or there's just a wall in the way. Jeez, you, you can see a difference there in one other thing, too. So in Halo 1, that guy would have been dead. For sure. In this game, he doesn't even take out his shield. Where is he? I didn't kill him, did I? Or is he just somewhere? Oh, maybe I did kill him. I must have just barely got him. I guess so. Uh, in, Halo t in Halo 2, that definitely does not kill him. And there's a couple reasons for that. The big one, obviously, is the fact that uh, because all shields take half damage from explosions, right? Things like grenades and stuff aren't super strong against elites until unless you've done some, like, damage to the shield because obviously once you the more da like every essentially every point of damage you deal to their shield is essentially twice as valuable for grenades because you know their shields take half damage so you know if you take out half their shield you're getting twice as much value out of that grenade on them basically more or less uh but uh, another big reason is the emp effect which Halo 1 uses the EMP effect for a couple things. Halo 2 actually, like, doesn't use it at all for basically anything. It doesn't use it for any weapons, anyways. It uses it for, like, one or two other things, but weapons are excluded from this. Come on now. Is that a weapon? Uh, I... Uh, come on! Uh, uh, uh. So, stealth elites in this game have shields. Uh... Which is a big difference from Halo 1, because Halo 1, they don't have shields at all. It's like a big thing. It's like their camo is essentially fueled by their shields, is I'm guessing what the logic would be. For some reason, they decided to give them shields in this game. I'm not sure if it's... I actually am not 100% sure if it's like a limitation or if it's just like they decided to do that. But uh, their shields are really weak to like compensate for that. Like, And the, if you don't know, there's actually two ranks of stealth leads in this game. There's a stealth minor and a stealth major, just like with... Uh, the standard ranks. Nice. But, uh, uh, stealth miners have very low shields. Stealth majors have more shields. The interesting thing, actually, is, uh, so, in Halo 1, uh, elite ranks only affect their shields. It doesn't affect anything else. It basically just affects their shields and, like, how good they are with weapons. Uh, Halo 2 actually, like, more or less got rid of the weapons thing and focused purely on like their health and like some of their behaviors in some cases but uh in the case of well, i guess one thing that does change that halo 1 doesn't change is that in this game their health under their shields also gets influenced whereas in halo 1 it's just shields and i'm mentioning this specifically because in the case of uh stealth elites they actually have a lot more health than regular elites do Especially the stealth majors, like you almost like want to use uh, headshot weapons on them over anything. Like it kind of encourages you because they have low shields. But like, if you try to kill them with like a plasma rifle, because plasma rifles in this game do like thirty-five percent damage to to elite health compared to other stuff, which is you know the standard would be a hundred percent. Plasma rifles are really bad against elite and against uh, stealth elites in this game. Because they have a lot of health. A lot more health than other elites do. Their shields also recharge insanely quickly. Stealthily, Stealth Major's shields recharge in like 2 seconds. Literally like 2.5 times faster than your shields do. It's actually like nuts. Anyways, for this part you pretty much just walk over here. And then a bunch of dudes spawn. And now you just want to sit back and not stand outside and get shot at. Because they'll just murder the, your punk ass. Because there's a lot of dudes that come into this room. I don't think I stuck that guy. Nope. I have plenty of ammo right now, so I'm just going to shoot him. 
because uh, yeah, you can see that's pretty much the way to do it. Because uh, the big thing with this game is that because the, the, so your health does you don't have a health bar anymore because uh, basically you have like a small amount of health after your shield and it just like uh, it's I forget the exact kind of long time. I think it takes. I mean, I guess I'll just mention this right now. Your shields take five seconds to recharge. I think that's actually exactly how long it takes. Five seconds to recharge, and then, uh, or rather, it takes five seconds for it to start recharging, and two seconds for it to recharge from empty to full after it starts recharging. It'll take, you know, less time if you have more shields left, but that's how long it takes from empty, basically. Uh... Your health actually takes about twice as long. It takes 10 seconds to start recharging and five seconds to recharge from empty to full. And uh, if you lose any health, like your shields will stop recharging if they hit, but your health will keep recharging as long as you don't lose your shield and get hurt. And you have like 70 shields, 30 health in this game. Multiplayer actually gives you 45 health. And for some reason, Halo 3 decided to just bring that over to campaign two, so that game's the same thing. Send your shields, forty-five health in every, in every mode, and not for some reason in this game they split it in campaign. I'm not sure why. That fifteen health wouldn't really make that big a much like that much of a difference, but it would let you survive like generally an extra bullet from most things, which would probably be nice. Oh god. The trick here actually is uh, the same thing with the first time you get to a commons area. These, that's what these are, I think, referred to. Like this is literally commons area B dash or B O one, and uh, man, they're really chucking nades. Difficulty influences this on higher difficulties. They throw grenades more often, and obviously on higher difficulties, the enemies, the ultra enemies, show up more often. Who in turn are just throw grenades more often to begin with. So, you know, that's a big thing. Is the other guy already dead? I think I already killed the other one, so... That's nice. Oop. I'm just gonna chuck a nade and he dodged, damn. Oh no! That He walked out at like the perfect time to just like kill me, because I was gonna try to see if I could get the grunt. Alright, well, Robert's gonna do this then. Ah, oh, I missed. I'm dead. I'm not dead. Okay. On the bright side, uh, now I can just pop them because they're all going to be... This is a big thing, too. This is super annoying. In this game, enemies have like a... I think this is actually new from Halo 1. This wasn't in Halo 1. Uh, they have a, a thing called like suppressing fire, which basically tells them to shoot at the last spot they saw you. Maybe Halo 1 has this? I forget. Uh, I forget if it does, but either way, Halo 2 like way over-tunes this. So like... It, not not only do enemies shoot the last spot they say, but they'll do it for like, like look how long they did it for. It, it, it's like a bit random. There's like it's it's like a random value can, from like I forget how long it can be. From, it's like a random min max value. Like you can see, like they shoot so long that guy literally his plasma rifle overheated. So that actually like gave me a bit of a benefit. Cause uh, if you don't know, that's actually new. Enemies couldn't overheat their weapons in Halo One, but uh, funny enough. In Halo 1, enemies did have ammo. They had to reload their, like, if, it, if like a Marines had to reload assault rifles and stuff. But Halo 2 doesn't have that anymore, so enemies never have to reload needlers, and your Marines never have to reload any of, like, their SMGs and stuff, which is, like, a weird thing for some reason that, like, they implemented one but got rid of the other. I'm not sure why. I guess, technically, it, it is in your favor, because Covenant do tend to use, you know, only weapons... Well, not only, but your Marines never have to reload anymore. And Covenant have a tendency to use stuff like plasma rifles, but it also means that when we see them use stuff like, you know, the carbine later on in the game, that's when things will get real nasty for you. I saw this guy. Oh, there he is. Yo, buddy, pop your head out. But yeah, you can see the difference here. Like, man, they just get... they just... way. Like, they're also not very aggressive in this game. Like, they shoot the last fight you were, but, like, it's rare for them to actually, like, hard push up on you like they did in Halo 1. So, uh, it kind of... The game really does just kind of encourage you to just kind of stay back and just never push. Because pushing is just going to get you killed most of the time. Because enemies just... 
like enemies aren't even particularly like they're actually like not as tough and uh, especially elites are definitely not as tough as they were in halo one like elites in halo one can take bullets but that's an elite wow i did not i thought that was a grunt so i was just gonna pop him he sure showed me see what i mean just like that i just lost because i didn't know it was an elite it was just nothing i could do man i seriously did not think that elite from the air was gonna walk all the way over there Dude, they're dodging like crazy. What the? Usually they don't move much at all in this game. Like, they're very not dodgy is a thing. But uh, today they're like, I cannot stick them for my life. So if you couldn't tell, uh, if you didn't realize this already, I'm probably going to be making mostly one level episodes. Because Halo, Halo 2 Legendary is... Uh, Quite draining, and especially if I'm talking the whole time, I'm not going to be able to... I don't know why that guy was just like that. He like, wasn't even paying attention to me. I was shooting and stuff. That was weird. Ooh, itchy eyebrow. It's funny, I picked up this shotgun, but I haven't really had a chance to use it yet. Because it's just like, I'm. how can I? I need to be in close quarters. Because the Halo 2 shotgun, it's still strong. Like, despite what people might tell you, the Halo 2 shotgun is still definitely, like, really strong, but it's also, like, Jesus Christ. Like, you need to be a lot closer for it to be effective, is the thing. Like, the Halo 1 shotgun is, has, like, ridiculous range, if you really think about it. Like, the default range of it... Uh, that guy almost got me again! What is this? I've never seen this guy get on this turret, and now he's done it to me twice. Fuck you, asshole. Because here's the thing, there's a turret right over here. That's wild. So you can actually skip this next encounter by uh, basically just going through the window. Because uh, I guess they didn't think of that, but... Uh, basically a bunch of dudes are running, about to run through this door, but I can kind of do this to kind of help out. And that makes a big difference because they basically just clean them out. And there's plenty of grenades down here. The one nice thing about Ultra Grunts in particular is they drop grenades more often than regular Grunts. Like, I think specifically they do drop more grenades more often. They're not Spec Ops levels of uh, grenades, but, you know. I don't think Elite Ultras do, but, uh, I mean, they, they, they always can. And funny enough, in this game, uh, all enemies can actually drop plasma grenades. It's not like a specific thing. Because uh, the way they handled it is enemies, it's like a separate thing. Enemies can just be given grenades independently of them. Uh, they still can't throw, like, elites will never throw grenades unless they're a spec ops elite. Yeah, there's always usually a strike. Oh. And yeah, once you take out a shield, it's easy, easy. Thank boy. But, uh, yeah, all enemies can, can have grenades. They don't. Won't, still won't throw them unless they like are set up to throw them so like only grunts and uh spec ops will so throw them among like the early levels basically and then you can see like look at this ultra like it, we're, like two marines are shooting him and i'm shooting him and he's just eating those grenades or eating those bullets is that a no that's a blue Man, they're tough. They're, oh, I was saying this earlier, but like, they're not even particularly tough. It's just you die so much faster that the fact that they're still... The fact that they're a little bit more frail than they were in Halo 1 is like not really relevant. You still kind of need to kill them really fast. Uh, I have so many things I want to talk about. Hey. Oops. Man, that guy, like, hit him with the get down, Mr. President. For some reason, this guy always gets stuck up here. I don't know what it is. But uh, we're not even going to try to do anything. We're just going to stick him. Dude, I stuck him, and then he immediately, like, reacted and almost killed me. Like, Jesus Christ. Sir, have the 
That's insane how fast they can kill you. So let's see if I can shotgun this guy. Got him. Thank God. I'm keeping this with me because uh, even though it's not the best, uh... The big thing to me is that you can't really get a shotgun anywhere else in the level, so I might as well have it as an option. Because everything drops plasma pistols. Because, like, here's a new enemy type into this game. Drones. This game actually doesn't really use drones all that often. We already saw the jetpack elites. They're a new thing, too. But, like, you don't actually see these guys all as much that often as you would expect them to be for, like, a flying enemy. Like, the... Like, we see them here, and then you don't literally don't see them... I guess you see him a bit in the next level, and then we don't see him again for a while. Anyways, I'm just gonna pick off all the grunts from up here, because, you know, same as usual. Grunts do freak out if you kill elites in this game, but they're actually less likely to than they were in Halo 1. Plus, like, it's just not worth it, because the BR is so much better at killing grunts than the pistol ever was. That It's like... It's not really worth taking the time to kill elites when you can just pop off the grunts instant like super easily like the br is really good at headshotting that's also partially influenced by the fact that headshotting is just way easier in this game because halo 1 it's like even with a pistol it's actually like kind of hard to headshot a lot of enemies like even grunts tend to be like not be consistent especially elites i think i'm dead yeah, no, he walked perfectly. If he had if he had tried to melee me, I probably would have got him, but instead I'm going back to the drones. That's what I get for being a smartass. I want it to be fancy. Luckily, uh, yeah, you can see that that's a really useful trick. You can just pop a grenade down there and kind of clean up like a lot of the drones early on. Like, that made a huge difference. Like, they're just, like, mostly... That, that, like, really, like, mutilates them. <laughs> I'm just gonna shoot this guy, because fuck him. There you go. The nice thing with Red Elites is that, just like in Halo 1, they still have the behavior where they're more likely to go into cover. So I can kind of force this guy oh really yeah never mind i guess he just decided i'm not going into cover ever so i shot him almost down to no shields and then he just stood there and kept shooting me thanks great look me making me look like a complete idiot classic you might think that uh smgs would be good against drones but uh they're actually really not that great because uh, drones take half damage from SMGs, so uh, it just doesn't do. It's just like SMGs still kill them decently well, but it's not as well as you would expect them to be. Kills them actually a lot better in ODST because uh, ODST it feels like you know makes drones an actual like that actually puts a little effort into them. It took them until ODST to really do anything big with drones. I feel like where like they're a firefight enemy and there's a bunch of different ranks and stuff. But uh, this game, it's like, nah, drones are just, like, here. N mind you, drones are kind of a nightmare, especially in, like, some of the harder parts of the game. I don't even know which one I've been shooting at. So, like, one of these is guys is almost dead. No idea which one. Instead, I'm just... Ugh, oh, come on! You know there's a Marine still alive. He's just chilling in the corner, not doing anything. Concern it. This is almost the end of the level, too. That was a good grenade toss, though, this time. I didn't even have to use the second grenade. Dude, that drone, like, went... Did you see that? Like, that one drone almost got me. It's crazy how fast they can keep... Alright. I'm just gonna pick up a plasma pistol. Let's pick off the grunts. On lower difficulties, you can kind of just ignore these guys and just, like, I don't know what you'd call it, like, just kind of, like, dude, what the f- 
They're n <laughs> see what I mean? They're cracked. But then plasma pistol overchargers are also cracked, and it tracked that guy like crazy, even though he was like running way away from it. it just like did not miss him. I kind of want to pick up the shotgun, but like I even I, let's be I'm just gonna be honest. For the rest of the area, it's like there's just no point. I I will be handicapping myself by having a shotgun. Because the next area, this outdoor section we're about to do, is a bit of a pain in the ass if you don't have, you know, a noob combo basically. Which, you know, I mean, that's kind of the default for Halo 2. Uh, is there anything I didn't even think to talk about? I'm kind of like, I'm so stressed out <laughs> dying a bunch there. It's just like, eh. I'm already kind of tired. Halo 2 Legend just tires you out, man. Blah, blah. I'll even carry a second plasma pistol because this is a good idea because there's no plasma pistols for the next little while. There's a free one here, but you, you kind of want to keep that too. So I'm going to try to hit this guy that's just sitting there on the turret. Got him. Okay, good. He's a little tricky to hit because if he aims straight for him, it'll, it tends to hit his turret and not him. Which means it doesn't really do anything. Also, yeah, this is a big annoying thing with this game too. Well, I shouldn't call it annoying, but like... A thing with this game is elites can dual wield now, just like you can. And uh, dual wielding elites are... Absolutely, like, terrifying. They will mutilate you in, like, the blink of an eye. So, you have to be real careful around them. Alright, so guys are gonna come from over here. I'm gonna drop down and just shoot. Oh, miss them. I'm probably dead now. Oh, nice. Okay, I hit a good angle. They're, 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 they're tracking and, like, general ability to, like, lead their shots is extremely powerful in Halo 2, but it's def it's still not perfect. So, you can still. That's kind of why you wanna be so far away. Because if you're far enough away, they. they there's enough time between their shots that you can kind of strafe them still. You gotta be careful about it though. Anyways, we're fueled up. Gonna carry, you know, both this one and the other one. There, right, we got two full ones. Nice. This should be necessary. I don't think you even really need one for the last area here, but basically, this last area is just a bunch of elites, so you have to be careful. The shotgun would actually be decent. Well, I mean, I say decent. Like, I mean, it'd be better than nothing, I guess. It's better than the, the standard stuff, but... You, you, need, you, need, you want a new combo, man. Because pretty much this is what you're going to be doing the whole time. It's just kind of popping out. The scary thing is this is one of the few times they can kind of push up on you back here so if you're not careful they'll just like like you can see like this guy is already kind of they can climb this box and like there's just a lot of ways they can kind of get you plus they can kind of ambush you from like one side if you're not paying attention thankfully one thing that is true in this game is that the needler is way less lethal in Halo 1 Legend, the Needler was actually pretty strong. But in this game, like, not only can they not... Uh, enemies cannot super combine you as a player. They can super combine other dudes, but not you. The player is effectively immune to super combines during campaign. Not only that, but the general damage of the Needler is a lot lower. So, like, it'll take out your shields decently quick, but it, actually, it really struggles to actually, like, kill you. Nice. And that's the level. Ooh, 